Jack was a career criminal. He made a small fortune for himself, committing different crimes over the years, and he was very good at going undetected. He was never caught for any crime he committed. If he wrote a book about how he did it, it would be a bestseller with criminals. Jack lived in a mansion in the Hamptons and used to love to chill out by the swimming pool with a cocktail and enjoy the high life his crime allowed him. He loved to think of the saying, crime pays, and he added to it especially when you're a smooth criminal like himself. He felt like going for a road trip one day, so decided to take a trip across the country. He felt like going on a journey with no destination, just drive and enjoy the scenery. So that's exactly what he did. He drove and drove stopping at motels now and then, and there were times he drove from daytime all through the night. He snorted lots of cocaine to stay awake. He ended up in this small town, which only seemed to have a diner, bank, post office, and another handful of shops. He decided the bank was an easy target, so made up his mind he was going to rob it. When he was in the room in the motel, he saw a flyer that said, Give blood to the blood bank. Call 1-800-BLOOD-BANK now. He thought back to when he was younger, before his life of crime. One of the ways he made money was give blood, and he would get payment for his blood. He'd realized it was a very good thing to do helping people. When he finally entered the bank wearing a mask, he held the gun to the girl behind the counter and shouted, hold up your hands and give me the money. The girl got a fright and held up her hands in panic. After a few minutes, the girl passed over loads of money in bags and Jack left the bank and jumped in his car. He decided to not bother go back to the diner, it wasn't worth the risk of getting caught, so he just drove out of town. But before he could even get halfway down the road, he saw a very strange sight. There were lots of pale women in black dresses in a line all across the road. He stopped the car, he got out and shouted, what the hell is this, I'm trying to drive on the road. One of the women pointed towards him and said, You must have seen the flyer, which said give blood to the blood bank. That is a sort of cryptic message to our coven. You see we are witches, and we have a witch's coven, and that bank is where we fund our coven, and you have taken all our money, so it's not a case of you giving blood. It's a case of us spilling your blood. With that, all the women walked towards Jack and with knives started cutting into him until his blood poured out of his lifeless body, which lay dead on the ground. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you want to stay up to date on new content, then please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified on new content. I asked my love to take a walk, to take a walk, just a little walk, down beside where the waters flow, down by the banks of the Ohio. He sang it so softly, the melody barely seemed to leave his lips. His voice was beautiful, hauntingly so. He held her hand as they lay next to the stream, and he sang for her, and only say, that you'll be mine in no other's arms intertwine. So soft his voice was, almost as though he was whispering. Well, he needn't worry that anyone else would hear him sing. The song was, after all, for her, so he didn't need to belt out the tune. He turned and looked at her. He was overcome with a rush of warmth. People call love. 
With his free hand, he gently brushed a strand of hair from her face. She had a faint smile on her face. It was almost a neutral look, and he continued to sing, down beside where the waters flow, down by the banks of the Ohio. He got up leaving her to lie, and listened to the melodic rush of the stream, the bright hot sun gleaming down on God's good earth, the green grass beneath their picnic blanket, rustling gently in the breeze. It was scenic, a simple delicate daisy, just one, he had no need for a bunch. He walked with it gently, he had always been a gentle person, it reflected in his singing, with the way it was so quiet. If you asked anyone about him, they'd tell you he'd never hurt a fly. They say love is like a flower, you must nurture it and let it grow. She was his flower, his love, his delicate little daisy. They also say you should not pick the flower and put it in a vase for display, as it will soon wither and die. Rather let the flower be, and let it be beautiful in the wilderness. That is what he intended for her. He would never pluck her and let the world see her beauty. She was his flower, and he wanted to grow and nurture her. He arrived back at the stream. A bird far off in the distance let out a shriek. Something must have frightened it. He hadn't wandered far from the stream, and once back next to her, he lay down. Daisy in hand, head on the grass, breathing in her scent, deeply as he lay next to her. Just as the flower in his hand had a beautiful smell, so did she. He placed the flower in her hair, further beautifying her, a flower for his flower. He looked towards the bright sun and squinted. Such a lovely day. The stream continued to flow steadily. He gazed at her with nothing but love. Unfortunately, the love he had for her was unrequited. Well, it didn't matter. He loved her enough for the both of them. He threw the knife into the river as he got up and walked away, leaving her there in all her beauty, flower and hair, young and beautiful, pale skin due to loss of blood flow, but still beautiful. He sang the last bit of the song as he walked away. I held a knife against her breast, as into my arms she pressed. She cried, good God, don't you murder me, I'm not prepared for eternity. I wandered home, between twelve and one. I cried, my God, what have I done? I've killed the only girl I love, for she would not want to be my bride, and only say that you'll be mine, and in no other's arms intertwine. Down beside where the waters flow, down by the banks of the Ohio. If he couldn't have her in life, he'll have her in debt. It was a secluded piece of the river. He could come visit her any time he'd like. He'd never have to fear losing her to anyone. She was his forever. Thanks for watching the Assassin Rapper, and if you enjoy the content then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content. Martin was driving towards the next town, as he had an important appointment for work in the morning. It was only 8pm, but he felt very sleepy. The next town was a two hour journey, so he made sure to drink three cups of coffee before making the drive. He would have loved to have been at home with his wife in bed, but he had to be at a meeting at 8pm, so he decided to drive to the next town and stay in the local motel. Back in Martin's house, his wife Marta rang Simon, who she was having an affair with. She said to him, Come over baby, he's finally gone, I can't wait until you get here and we will make up for lost time. 
Simon smiled and said he will be looking forward also. Martin was feeling very tired and was cursing the coffee for not working. Suddenly he heard a thump. He realised he must have fell asleep. Then he realised he hit something. He was in shock and walked out of the car and nearly fainted when he saw a girl lying down dead on the road. He had just ran over a girl who must have been hitchhiking. He couldn't think of any other reason why she would have been out on the road in the dark. Back in the house, Simon told Marta how much he loved her and they started kissing. Suddenly Marta's phone rang and she answered. Martin was almost crying and said, Sweetie, I just ran over a girl. I killed a girl, sweetie. She was on the street hitchhiking and I fell asleep and hit her. Marta said, Sweetie, you need to call the police right away and tell them it was an accident. When Martin hung up, a man came out of the bushes and shouted at him, You bastard, what did you do to my girlfriend? I was just in the bushes collecting a bag of weed and I come back and see my girlfriend ran over. You think you're going to get away with this? Martin said, Sir, I'm so sorry, but I didn't see your girlfriend. She must have been in the middle of the road. It was an accident. The man took out a gun and said to Martin, You pitiful fool, you expect me to believe you will be punished for what you did? You will just get a slap on the wrist and maybe get a few months in prison at most. But they will just say it was an accident, so I got a different idea. I'm going to make you pay right now, you bastard. The man pulled the trigger and shot the man in the head. Simon was very happy and looking forward to see Marta and he was very excited knowing her husband Martin was going to stay in the next town so he could even stay the night. Suddenly something moved and before he realised there was a girl with her thumb out just in front of him. He lost control at the wheel and hit her. He panicked and drove on. Martin's car passed him. He could have sworn Martin didn't see him because as strange as it looked, Martin seemed to have been falling asleep and he wouldn't have known only for the light in the car on. Even if he wasn't asleep, he guessed Martin would have no idea it was him in the car and hopefully he won't know it was him who ran that girl over.